Hi everybody, welcome to my channel for the third battle report of ETC 2022 in Pesaro, Italy. Um, first of all, I hope the sound is finally better. I've tried to uninstall, reinstall OBS, try to adapt some parameters, so I hope it is finally better. Uh, if not, I think at some point I have to consider changing my micro. Um, what about this battle? So. As a reminder, we had two good wins on uh, day one, and then that was the first round of the second day. We played against Netherlands, and I got paired against Wuzak, who was their KOE player. You know already my list, and this was my opponent's list. So first of all, if you're not familiar with Netherlands' list, they have... Um, I think quite similar to Australia, a, mat a meta that is quite aggressive. Uh, think list where you can have a lot of fun when you're playing them, but there are definitely some high variance list I would say personally uh, Taking some risk approach S if you take a look at this one for example I mean no BSB KOA you don't see that every day So it's uh, quite risky at some point, but at the same time uh, The upside or I think the advantage from taking this approach is the fact that they can have more unit to the table and bring some very aggro list that can have more combat unit and therefore being better in combat and more able to get big wins. I think that's the approach more or less. So in this case, the list I faced is based around three lords and a lady courtier. So he has four cowboys, which I think is the max that you can get as a KOE player. So he has a hippo general with the divine judgment lens, uh, obviously with the tabard sainted. And I think the option that makes him plus two on the charge when charging something in the front, something like that. Then he has a Lord on a face Steed with the Twist and Resolve, so he can break my Kagadai, for example. Uh, with a 1-up, I guess, he's a Paladin with Excellence. Then he has another Lord on a face Steed. Uh, this one with a Albert with Velo, which is multi wound 2 against uh, Fear Causer, which is also an issue for me, and he's a Paladin as well. So three scary Lord, I guess two of them at least, that can deal with my Great Can, which is an issue. Then his core basically consists of three scoring units, two of them uh, slightly bigger with Ban of Discipline and one of them a bit a bit smaller. Uh, he has paid the hereditary bound spell as a banner. Then in special he has two units of Pegasus Knight, one bigger with Discipline, another one just with a champion. Like I said, the Lady Courtier who is an adept druidism and then he has six Nyad with a champion. So basically without taking any mage in his character setup he still has one, two, three, four, five spells, which is not bad at all. And basically everything can fight outside maybe of the Nyad. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a scary list on paper. Uh, we played Diagonal and Breakthrough. So always quite interesting because the Breakthrough zone are very big. Uh, meaning my big triangle could be a good starting zone to try to reach his small triangle and the opposite. That's what you expect, I think, in most cases, basically to turn around a bit more. Or you can really clash frontal as well. It depends a bit on, on the maps and the, the matchups. Uh, that's the spell I picked and that's his spell. Matchup analysis. So it's a fighty MSU carry with Killy Lord causing me tons of problems. Um... I have to be compact, I guess, use my strengths, which is to be steadfast. I need to avoid giving him uh, multiple charge for unit that would be in middle range, more or less. So I have to be very careful of what I'm doing. I think in this case, if I play a too open game, I think I can really be destroyed. I don't have so much AP in my big units, uh, considering the tribesmen and uh, merc vets, only AP 1 or 2. So I could really get in trouble if he managed to combo charge me. So I need to be really careful with what with what I'm doing. Second secondary objective seems kind of hard to play. He was going to push me. I'm kind of likely to lose it. I think it could be hard for me to get in harder for me to get in his zone since he's like to he's likely to, to push me. And for him it shouldn't be too hard to be in my zone. So it's not going to be easy to get that secondary objective. And that's also one of the main reasons behind my estimation of the matchup, which was a 7. And obviously, uh, I had a curiosity around this list, basically. When you face this type of list, you always say, you're always thinking, like, has this guy some special skills to avoid panic check and break check and therefore doesn't really need a BSB? 
or not. And that's definitely something I was going to try to figure out or to take advantage of. If he made any uh, six inch mistake, I would definitely be try to look out for, for these. Deployment. So he won the roll for side and um, I think made the right choice here. Gave me basically the impossible in my big triangle, which I think is the choice that I would have made too. So definitely um, the good choice by him. And after that, obviously, I decided to drop for first turn. Basically thinking if he managed to start, I could be in big trouble because then he could really push me hard. Uh, on the opposite, if I start, I could possibly uh, slow him down at some part and also have a chance to adapt. So what I went for was a semi-compact approach on the top of the table, I would say, like on my strong flank, more or less. I anticipated the fact that he could put his Valor multi-wound guy against my Tuscus. So I decided to try to cover that by putting my Death Star in that position with the Great Can. Basically, thought process being, if he decided to put it that way, I could easily, by moving a bit, just covering the, the distance for him to move forward to, and basically uh, punishing uh, him if he moves forward or fail a charge and so on. So I decided to that would be the good way to support each other, despite the impossible being very annoying for me. Then I decided in case he wants to put almost nothing in his uh, left, in his small triangle and try to go for another approach, I would put all three scoring here to basically uh, secure the breakthrough in case he decides to go low on his uh, strengths on this part of the map. Then I put my two main units around the middle, uh, two chaff pieces if I need to. And on my weakest flank, I put two very flexible units, being my two uh, lone monsters that could easily move 12 or 14 to the right or to the left, which could be very uh, useful in that case. Uh, regarding my opponent counter deployment, so he did um, something interesting. He put his scoring unit on his strong flank, so to say. So, so what he replicate more or less what I did with my deployment. And then um, he put some mobile unit to stop me from breakthrough. So he put the Valor guy, he put the General and he put the Lady Courtier. And then around the middle of the table he put the second Lord on a face seed and two unit of Pegasus. So I think that was an interesting choice. You could already anticipate that he would try to use his mobile strengths to basically zone me from going into his deployment zone and at the same time pushing me with his cavalry with the help of the Lord and Pegasus to try to get into my zone. So I think that was already quite easy to read. Nothing big I can do to stop that, to be honest. I think um, I could be in big trouble if he gets any combo charge, so I will need to defend. I think I don't have any other big choice here. Um, let's move on to my turn one. So my one. What did I do? Not much. Basically, I calculate where he could go with 14 inch march. And then I made sure that if he does that, first of all, I can chaff something if I need to. And my Tusker can still turn around and escape eight. In case he wants to push hard into that part of the map, then I could definitely exploit to counter push. That's something um, I considered and I wanted to, to have enough option. By pushing a bit more to the limit of his charge range, basically I would get myself in trouble of, um, I think, getting him to push and then me behind the impossible not being able to support. And I think if he get go those two, basically he can put his multi wound guy in a minimized position in the front. And then even if I charge, then he can just counter charge me with the general and get rid of part of the map. And I think then I'm in big trouble. So I went kind of conservative on, on this at the beginning. I put some space between my two uh, single models, try to get some space towards the left. Other than that, not much. I saw a big opportunity starting on is the fact that the Lady Coutier was, I guess, a 4 up, 4 up with 5 wounds, Residence 5. Basically being in open train facing my Merc Vets and I figured out if I can take that out. First of all, that's no Dredism anymore, no healing anymore and definitely causing some panic checks around him. Magic face, I try End of Heaven on him, I failed the cast, uh, I dispel Wrath of God and with shooting I did 4 wounds to his courtier so he has 1 wound left. Too bad, I would have liked to already cause a panic check on his general on a 9, no reroll and you can imagine what would happen if he failed that one. I mean, uh, then the game is completely a different game, basically. His turn 1. Um, he decided to try to shield his Lady Courtier with his general, basically. Uh, kept the Valor guy to yeah push a bit forward to, to keep my Tuscus honest, more or less. 
Other than that, he started to push with his second lord facing my giant, giving me a long charge for the frosty. And basically, he just gave me, yeah, he had distracting, so if I charge, he gets multiple co uh, counter charge. So, nothing too interesting for me, he just wanted to bait me, and basically, this would allow him to continue to push towards my deployment zone. Magic face, he got hereditary, and I he failed summer growth, I kept my dice to dispel that. Uh, definitely I didn't want him to raise his uh, Lady Coutier, I want to try to finish him because I saw with the angle that I could be able to get some models in his fr front rank, uh, in his front to, to shoot him basically. My turn 2, so what I'm doing basically, um, not many movement, just move back here slightly to giving him longer charges on the multi wound guy. Here I move my mage in this unit to take as much shot as possible. I think, if I remember correctly, I, I had four guys with no cover in the front. I had the BSB in the flank, but doesn't give a shit because always hinting on four plus. And then one guy maybe that don't see or see me with hard cover and second guy with hard cover. Figure out I should be able to do the last wound and causing him a panic check on one and nine. What was what I was already looking for. I think if I were him, I would have backed off the Druidist guy to be so far away as possible. So yeah, I'm definitely trying to take advantage of this. Uh, backed off with my two monsters, basically. I need to defend. He has so many units looking at me. I cannot try anything crazy now. And uh, that's it more or less. Basically, I'm trying to look to reduce his amount of uh, threats and then maybe get a zone where I could push slightly but here as you can see I'm totally blocked because this guy is looking with a fine line over here so if my Death Star move a bit forward I can get one, two, three, four charge, I can get multi charge from everywhere and then basically with most of the unit having only AP1 I'm in big 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 trouble especially since uh, general this guy as well could fight my uh, Kagadai guy. Magic face, I get minus one resilience on the Gautier. I really want to secure the fact that I will kill him. Um, I fail Wrath of God, he dispel End of Heaven. So I first I try End of Heaven, he dispel that one, and then I fail Wrath of God, unfortunately. With shooting, I kill the Lady Gautier, leadership check on a 9, and he passes that. So 9, no reroll. Uh, this was a, a, already a very important moment for him, because if he goes out of the map, um, I think this is going to be a completely different game after that so yeah uh, luckily for him no problem here his turn 2 continues to push toward the bottom uh, minimize the position still a long charge for the frosty um, yeah continue to zone me very far away with his pegasus as well that can charge really really far uh, reposition is general around here reposition the pegasus towards the top of the map these guys didn't move much so here again I see an opportunity these guys are uh, no rerolls, so basically if I can shoot them, cause a couple of wounds, the general is nearby as well, so again, I see here some potential to do something. Um, magic face, he gets minus one agility, two dice against two, just basically I think to get me, to get his plus one movement, and then he got big scrying off on everybody. I don't know if I kept dice, recover dice, I don't remember exactly how, how that went, but he got big scrying I think on 4 dice or 5 dice around here, which is uh, definitely something good for him. Uh, my turn 3, again I don't move much, I start to move forward with my uh, darts basically, giving them no charge because of the flank and the impassable, but this guy can charge me in the front, get an overrun into them, but I have space then to counter charge in the flank. So basically he's the only guy that can charge, but at the same time he can't do much. Uh, other than that, yeah, I just realign to make a solid battle line here and make sure I can get no points. You can see my plan. I think I already got a first tranche from range damage by killing the Lady Coutier. I need another one point, I think just one point, to get to the second one, to get to 12-8. I'm most likely going to lose secondary, nothing I can do against that. But I felt that by playing compact, I think there is... I can probably save all my points and make sure he gets... Uh, zero points and if it's that then I would be uh, better than my matchup rating basically uh, I got hereditary on the bruisers in case he wants to charge me with two dice then I got the end of heaven kill one of the cavalry I thought these guys with resilience 3 were a good target maybe I should have already tried to focus the general or the pegasus uh, you never know but I just killed one cavalry so it didn't matter much in this case Shooting, I tried to shot, I think, at these Pegasus to try to force panic check. I did two wounds, and uh, that was it. Or maybe I shot at them because of scrying. 
uh, on them. I don't remember to be honest with you. Um, yeah, that's it more or less. He's turn three, so he find the sweet spot here with his uh, lone guy. The general stays here. He put a bit more space, so I think I might have shot at them, and he just put more than six to avoid any panic check. Uh, other than that, yeah, just form another strong battle line to face mine, basically, more or less. Uh, in his magic phase, he gets uh, minus one agility to get some movement bonus. My turn four, I just rearrange to make sure he has no sweet spot here, so he's going to need to move. Um, yeah, rearrange my battle line, more or less, but still find no way to... To, to go out because this guy is charging so far away basically if these guys move out now even with chaffing him uh, I can still get double charged by these two and I think that's still enough trouble for me and after that I will need to find another way to chaff him I don't think there is a way I can get uh, like him two or three scoring unit in in his deployment zone so I don't find way I think that's this point of time where I took my a timeout with my cap with my coach to see if he found a way to get secondary objective uh, with chaffing and so on but neither of us found a way to to do it basically and uh, we felt okay with the situation at the moment and the likelihood i think i had a good chance of getting another tranche and basically ending up with a nine uh, shooting phase i fail end of heaven on his general uh, I got Wrath of God off and with shooting I did one wound to his general with my poison shot. His turn, um, nothing much, he just rearranged, put all of three together to make sure there was no way I get breakthrough. Other than that, just move a bit away from my Wrath of God so it stops his push from bottom basically. Um, and then magic phase, he got scrying on his lord. But he got triple six by doing so and kill his Naya champion, but doesn't give a fuck. That's a bit of a problem, I think, with the conclaves. Basically, you can five dice something. Worst case, you lose your mage, but you lose zero point and you lose spells. But at the same time, you've got the spell you wanted to for more. Uh, I think it's the downside is too small in comparison to what you gain. So I think that could be a bit, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, next, next, my turn five. Didn't do anything crazy, as you can see. I'm still, we're still neutralizing each other quite well, I guess. A magic face, I get end of heaven, did one wound to his general, and here I'm seeing an option again because I have poison shot, 16 of them, plus a crossbow. If I can do two wounds on his general, panic check on eight, panic check here as well. Uh, could turn, the, turn out the game again, so I felt here could be the time again. Uh, let's move on to shooting phase. Uh, let me see. So Wrath of God came down. I got minor. He dispelled minus one resilience on his general. Obviously, let me have another Wrath of God, which was nice. And then this Wrath of God came down, kill one of the knights or kill a couple of knights, I guess. He passes his panic check on the H. We rollable here. Um, and then with shooting, I'm able to do a total of three wounds. He saved all three of them, so he's fine. Too bad, not getting even half the points on him. He's turn five, and then it's going to be my last. So he's keeping unit in, as you can see, it's my breakthrough zone. So he's keeping as far away as he can from the rest of God. Then he can still march within my zone last round. Nothing I can do to stop that, basically. Knight going into breakthrough, I mean, <laughs> that's a dream scenario for him. Uh, magic phase, he hasn't any magic left, I guess, uh, other than the bounce spell, basically. And then, did my Wrath of God come down? Not sure, to be honest with you. I don't know. Uh, let's move on to my turn 6, we'll see. No, didn't come down. My turn 6, so there is these guys I can try to kill. So that's what I'm going to do. I do End of Heaven, did one wound to him. Um, Wrath of God comes down, kill... No, doesn't... I think doesn't come down. Or come down doesn't do anything I think it didn't come down and with shooting I will do another two wounds so I get half point but I don't kill him uh, unfortunately and then on his last turn he's going to break through and it's going to end as we expected a 9 to 11 we discussed after the game I think we both made the sensible approach him going more aggro without starting and without having dedicated chaff could be kind of risky and not easy to put in place and me going forward 
I never saw an option to do it without risking too many points. So basically, I think both of us had a, a view on the matchup that was a small win for him. And since it was going this direction, we both agree to play like uh, like we expected. I think hey, you need to yeah keep in mind that it's a team tournament and you cannot... I couldn't risk by moving forward to take a zero on this matchup, which is uh, possible considering the amount of tool that he has in his list. So I was totally okay with that. Um, it's it's still a close game. Never happy to lose a game, obviously, but I felt the matchup was quite complicated that I didn't see the option. I thought after, if did I have any option to maybe by deploying my Desta on the right to push hard. But even doing that, I mean, he's too good at against my Great Can. He has too many counters, so he can go into combat against my Great Can. Maybe even kill it, and then I have only strength four guys. So I think I don't have the tool basically to deal it. No matter how I, how I rearrange my deployment, I don't see any good option to uh, get the breakthrough in this game, basically. What happened on the other table? We had a couple of mirror match uh, that were close results. So we had Demon Mirror, a Vermin Swarm Mirror that were quite close. The Sylvan Elf Mirror went into the favor of a Gazer with 19. Then we lost big on the table between Empire and uh, Infernal Dwarves. We got another two huge wins uh, from uh, our Dwarven Old and Warhouse Dark God players. And then we got a quite big loss on the last table. But all put together, we had an 88 win, which was uh, quite good. Would have liked a couple of points more, like always. But still, I think a decent result considering the Netherlands team that was quite good with a dangerous uh, meta. And I feel this also explains some of the results if you see their list and um, yeah the, the approach that they took to build their list I think this explains also some of the high score that we saw on some tables at least as you can see 19 19 19 F half of the table were big big wins also this one being quite big so this explains also the the high magnitude of the result but uh, thanks a lot to Netherlands for the the round uh, definitely uh, also, always a pleasure to see them. We face them already at WTC, so maybe uh, again next year, we'll see. What can I say about my game that I didn't say already, just as a reminder? I think deployment, when thinking about it, I think both of us made the sen sensible choice here, and I don't see any other crazy good idea that could have get me the win without taking uh, much more risk than what I was ready to. Secondary objective, yeah, I think he did exactly what he needed to, putting the scoring unit in the zone where he had area to push with the help of one lord, which was definitely enough, and then putting a 3-4 unit to basically stop me from uh, breaking through. So I think this was definitely a good choice from him. He took advantage, I took advantage, sorry, from open shot on his courtier. I think he made small mistake. First of all, he could have deployed differently to not giving me free shot turn 1 first one and then second turn he still had the option on his turn one to move back 14 to be out of range of the merc vets or to be as far as possible from them and i think he took a, a risk plus at the same time he took a risk from me causing him um, non-rollable leadership he had one to take he could have had more to take and i think he, he he could have been more careful because that was still a small to medium risk to make the game change completely uh, in a way that then he, ha he hasn't the control of the game anymore and that would have changed a lot I think towards my possibility to push forward so I try what I could I think one shooting phase where I shot the Pegasus I'm not sure was the right one maybe I should have started to shot at his lord already to force him to move back and maybe help me get a superiority to push forward so I'm not sure I made all the right choice uh, after I killed the Lady Courtier with the shooting could have been slightly better but overall I tried to take the opportunity that I had and I think at the same time not so easy for him to push me without taking uh, much risk especially since I started put some distance between him and me so uh, despite the fact that it looks a boring game maybe from the outside it was still very technical a lot of things to measure you need to keep in mind that for me each turn I needed to measure okay they can fly 16 okay they can move 14 16 so I was putting dice on all the map with all the possible movement that he could do to simulate and try to visualize what he could do because that's really the challenge in this type of matchup is to visualize what are his options and I think that's why also a single model with high movement value are very very strong is because they can do so many things it's hard to anticipate what they can do and therefore they can uh, catch you off guard so to say 
So yeah, each turn was for me uh, taking a couple of minutes, put the dice, see what he can do everywhere, and then see how I can or I can cover that positioning with infantry of cavalry unit, which is not so easy to do against single model. But uh, yeah, I think I did a decent job. Nothing to be really, no, nothing to have really regrets on. If you have a different opi opinion, feel free to le leave me a comment with your incredible idea. I would be really happy to see here a solution that I didn't see. But um, yeah, I, I tried to think about it long and hard and I didn't find any better solution than what I did. So that's how it is sometimes. I think we have also to accept sometimes in some bad matchup that you need to limit the, the points that you're giving to give nothing and basically, um, yeah, try to take what you can and get um, as much point as you can basically under the, the circum circumstances of the matchup. Thanks a lot guys for watching the battle report. I hope you liked it and talk to you soon for the fourth game. Bye bye.